Hi everybody, uh, my name is Adam. I am a herpetology keeper here at Audubon Zoo. Today we're going to show you a little bit of a scatter feed demonstration with our Komodo Dragon Raja. Right now we just opened up the door. He should be coming on out very soon. So this is one of the things that we do for enrichment for Raja. What we'll do is we'll spread a bunch of food items around the exhibit and then he will come on out and he's got to find them all. Um, it's kind of a way to stimulate him as we feed him. Gives him a little bit of a a um, little bit of a chance to do some work to find his own food. And he just found the first one. So he's got 15 food items in there. And so Komodo dragons, these guys, they are the largest lizards in the world. Uh, they're from a few islands in Indonesia. The, obviously the most famous one being the island of Komodo. Um, but they are also native to Rinca, Flores, and a couple other islands. And right now, as he's looking around, you can see he's using that nice big long tongue of his. And that is pretty much one of their best ways of finding food that we scatter around. They're gonna continuously flick out that tongue. And what they're doing, whenever they flick out their tongue, they are actually collecting small little scent particles floating around in the air. So what they'll do is they'll flick out that tongue, they'll grab those particles, bring it back into their mouth. There's an organ on the roof of their mouth called the Jacobson's organ. And that will process whatever, um, whatever molecules they're grabbing out of the air as scent and help them find things. So the reason that they have that forked tongue is actually pretty interesting. It allows them to essentially work out directionality. So whenever they flick out their tongue, each end is grabbing those scent particles and for example, if it picks up more scent particles from a deer carcass or something on the right side, then they know got to move in that direction. So they do have very good eyesight, but their sense of smell or their sense of smell is much better, and that's what he's primarily using to go around the enclosure right now. So when I scattered the food items in there, I also um, took a little bit of the water that smelled like the food items and scattered some of it throughout the enclosure. What that also does, that kind of gives him a little bit of extrasensory um, stimulation in there. So he gets those other smells, he walks around, he explores things. So it's a little bit of exercise for him and definitely some mental enrichment. So one thing that um, most people don't actually know about a lot of reptiles is um, they are actually very smart, very capable of learning. Monitor lizards are especially, um, especially good at learning. So Raja here, he is target trained, which means we present him a colored buoy. When he sees that, he goes over to it. Once he taps the buoy, then he gets his food reward. So they're very capable of learning associations with objects, such as targets with food. And we actually do training with um, all of our monitor lizard species around in our department. So some people are asking, what's he, what's he eating? So he's eating right now, he's eating uh, rodents and birds. So we have large rats in there and quail. Um, we give him a variety of food. So um, he's, not just, he's not just limited to one thing. Komodo dragons in the wild, they're gonna eat pretty much any meat that they can find around. Um, primarily, they're gonna eat a lot of um, carcasses and large prey items. So. If they take down a large prey item, then a bunch of Komodos will generally come over to that carcass and they will all rip and tear. But right now we're giving him just little bite-sized things. We do sometimes do enrichment sessions with him with a carcass feeding, where we actually have a cable that will hang from the top of the exhibit and give him a big hunk of meat. And what that, that's really good exercise for him because it lets him work his neck muscles, lets him move around, rip and tear, and kind of simulate the type of behaviors that a Komodo would do in the wild. Is he um, full grown? He is full grown. Um, like he might get a little bit larger um, through the course of his life. They, they never really cease growing um, altogether, but he is pretty much an adult right now and um, will mostly remain this size. Can Komodo dragons run fast? They can run pretty fast. Yeah, they can run um, probably up to about like 10 miles an hour. They're kind of uh, burst um, burst predators. They can run really fast for really short distances. Like most reptiles, um, 
they have they're not as good as sustaining speed as um, mammals are um, but they can be very fast for very short distances someone's asking if he's a good swimmer um, he is a good swimmer he um, he doesn't really go into uh, his pool a whole lot for swimming he'll mostly just go in there to soak uh, he'll also do that with his indoor pool so um, we haven't really seen him swimming around in this exhibit but in the wild they are capable of swimming and they have a very powerful tail that they can use to um, keep themselves afloat and swim around. So can you tell us a little bit about their uh, venom in their tongue, if it's poisonous? Yes, so um, so Komodo dragons, they're interesting. Um, they are classified by some as venomous, uh, as like a venomous lizard. There's some debate in the community as to whether or not it is true venom. Um, but what we do know is that they have glands in their jaw that secrete a compound um, that works as sort of an anticoagulant, so it can cause um, excessive bleeding. And it's essentially going to be their, um, their primary means of predator capture. So if they attack a larger animal, which they will, in the wild they will feed on like water buffalo, large boars, if they attack a larger animal, uh, that compound helps to do some local damage at the bite and it will um, cause them to bleed out and weaken. So um, it really helps them in prey capture to have that excess um, compound working for them. But there is a lot of debate on whether or not it is actually venom or not. So how old is Raja and how long is he? Uh, Raja, he's about 15, um, 15, 16 years old right now. And um, he's probably about like five and a half, six feet long. Um, it's been a, a little bit since we've done a full measure of him. So what's Raj's favorite like enrichment? His favorite enrichment is probably um, carcass feeding um, because it allows him to get a really good meal. He gets a lot of exercise. Um, he'll, it, it's kind of a puzzle for them as well because a lot of times they'll get uh, really large chunks of meat and it doesn't really look like he can open his mouth very wide. His head seems like it's pretty small, but he can open it a lot larger than you would imagine just by looking at him. Um, like Komodo dragons, they can eat up to like 80% of their body weight if they wanted. Uh, we don't feed him that much, obviously. Um, but in the wild, uh, they can consume very large quantities. So we'll give him these large chunks. He'll have to rip and tear and figure out how he's gonna swallow those big chunks. And it's a, a really good mental, mental puzzle for him. So how much do y'all feed him in a day? Um, we usually feed him only a couple times a week. Um, we don't feed him every day. Um, reptiles, the good thing about them is since they are ectotherms and they don't have to burn their, um, they don't have to burn energy to keep themselves warm since they do all that with the environment by basking, um, we can feed them a lot less than um, one of our lions, for example. Are right, Komodo dragons nocturnal? Um, they aren't. Um, they are mostly going to be out and about in the day. Um, at night, they'll usually just either find a comfortable place to sleep or find a burrow or some um, some place that they can hunker down. All right, Komodo dragons, like usually solitary animals? Um, generally, yeah. Um, they pretty much will, they'll feed as a group sometimes. So if there's a large carcass, a lot of Komodos might converge on it. But as individuals, they pretty much keep to themselves. Um, as babies, uh, they're pretty much going to be born and then immediately kind of take to the trees um, because young dragons are very vulnerable um, and they will sometimes be eaten by other larger dragons. So they will go up into those trees and they'll try to avoid um, any confrontation with anything larger than themselves until they're old enough to hunt themselves. And then where can Komodo dragons be found in, in the world? They are, um, like, the most famous hotspot is the island of Komodo, uh, which is one of the lesser Sunda Indonesian isles, or islands. Um, but they're also on a, a few other islands in that region. The other notable ones are like Rinca and Flores. And then how long is his tongue? Um, I don't actually know the exact length of his tongue. It's, um, I think it's probably about twice the length of his skull. Like, reptile tongues are, they're much longer than they seem. They are, they're only seen for very short distances, so, um, that's a good question. It's kind of hard to measure. <laughs> and then a lot of people are wondering, um, are Komodo dragons dangerous to humans? Um, they're, they will pretty much keep to themselves unless they are provoked or if they are, like, if they are hungry. But generally, where they come from in the world, they get enough 
Uh, they get enough food, they have enough prey items, they can pretty much live separate from people. So there shouldn't be any real, like they could potentially be harmful if they decided to attack somebody, but that's not something that is um, ever going to happen without provocation. And then are Komodo dragons endangered? Uh, they are classified as vulnerable right now, I believe. Um, their, their numbers are in the wild pretty okay, but since they are an island species, that puts them in kind of a higher tier of risk because island species, if there's a natural disaster or something that really affects their habitat, it's difficult for them to be able to come back. So just by nature of where they live is one of the reasons they're the most threatened. And then can you talk a little bit about his training sessions that you do with him? Yeah, so usually, well, the main thing that we'll do with him training is targeting. And um, all that really entails is um, we have a long pole with a buoy on the end that we'll present to him. When he sees that, he knows that, okay, now I'm being fed. He'll come over and he'll tap that buoy, then he'll get his food reward. Um, and one of the reasons that we do that is kind of to sort of establish a relationship with him, get him used to humans being present. Um, it helps us out a lot when it comes to things like medical procedures and, um, and essentially being able to do any care aspects um, for him. By having him trained and used to our presence, we can get him to come over to us. Um, we can get him to um, essentially be relaxed while we do medical examinations. Um, and also, um, it helps us in shifting him back and forth uh, for cold nights. We do shift him inside uh, if it gets too cold for him. And um, the best thing about him is he comes when you call him. <laughs> and then let's see. So how uh, long can a Komodo dragon live in human care versus in the wild? So um, in captivity, um, Komodo dragons, they're, they're generally, they live um, like sort of into their early 30s. Um, in the wild, um, the, they're not 100% sure exactly what the maximum lifespan is, but um, it, it is, they can live for a pretty long time. Um, and they, they can live longer um, in the wild than they do in captivity. And then was Raja born at the zoo? No, Raja came here when he was young. So we've, we essentially raised him here. Um, our assistant curator uh, did most of the work, getting him used to people and raising him up. Um, but he's just been here since he was very young. What's his favorite food? His favorite food? Um, it's probably, um, probably lamb or, or goat carcass. That's what we usually give him. So does he like shed his skin similar to a snake? He does shed his skin, but it's different than how snakes would shed. So snakes, it's kind of an all-in-one. Um, they will, they will um, just slough it off all in one piece. Whereas most lizard species, um, Komodos especially, they will just sort of slough it off in bits. So um, they'll just rub up against different objects in their enclosure and, um, and pieces will, uh, will come off in different chunks. Their skin is actually pretty interesting as well because you can't, it's hard to see, but all that bumpy, uh, all that bumpy texture, um, those are all, um, it's essentially natural armor for them called osteoderms. So it's, it's much more, um, much harder than other reptile skin. And what that does is it really helps them if they get into confrontations with other dragons in the wild um, and it helps protect them against predators as well. It's almost like natural chain mail. And what does his like skin feel like? Uh, it's, it feels very rough. Um, it's kind of like, it, I wouldn't say sandpapery because it's a little bit more um, like the, the nodules are much larger than on sandpaper, but it, it is very rough, I would say. Kind of like studded leather or something. And then can you talk a little bit more about their senses again? Yeah, so uh, they have very good eyesight, um, and um, but it's not as good as their smell. So their sense of smell is probably the most pronounced thing. They can smell um, prey items from a few miles away. 
Um, and again, the way that they they essentially gather scent particles is they'll flick out that tongue, they'll grab those scent particles out of the air, then they'll process them. So that is actually a very efficient, um, like very efficient smelling system that they have. Okay, I think we're gonna do one more question. Okay. And then someone wants to know how many eggs does a female lay at one time? Um, clutch size of female is, um, I'm not sure exactly what the maximum is, but I'd, I'd say like maybe, um, probably about like five or six. All right, about wraps it up. All right. Thanks, Adam. No problem.